with you. And uh, the first thing, the first thing, and I would say, it, it was a big, massive congratulations. It's been uh, some years that you actually it was, were one of the first uh, bands to get the number one and the proper indie uh, charts when it was proper indie back in the day. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what was all that about? Well, I thought. I thought that uh, Ky- Kylie got there first. And, no, no, she was after. Was it? What, 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 yeah, well. Stop getting more. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right. Fair, yeah. So, well, we were, we we were, we had, a, we were very lucky in 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 our outset, you know, uh, in our early days because um, we had some friends. Well, Phil Chevron, who was in the Pogues, who uh, who we knew, and. Uh, he, we made, we we only ever made one demo, and uh, I gave it to him. He worked in rocks, uh, rock on records in Camden, and he forwarded it to Elvis Costello. And on the back of it, we got the deal to do Greenfields, and it was an open-ended, non-contractual thing with Demon and Imp Records. <laughs> and we got a support slot with Elvis Costello and the Pogues at Hammersmith Palais, where we played. Uh, it was a mo- it was a month of Mondays it was called, but it was uh, it was five Monday nights uh, uh, in over a mo- you know, obviously a month. I thought it was a month of Sundays. No, it was Monday night. It was Monday we nights. Prepared, we prepared for that, you lads. Always was one of the things. Sorry, to, we prepared for it. It was one of the things you had to do off the cuff. Uh, well, we were sort of prepared. Yeah. <laughs> it was um, we had to you know re- you know get our shit together to do it, and but it was it was fantastic. From going, we, we were playing like three times a week in London doing bars. We were mainly doing covers. Paul was busy writing what, the lion's share of what was uh, Night of a Thousand Candles, so he was busy, doing, you know, focusing on that. But we were still out there, you know, pumping our wares. And uh, yeah, and it all it, it fell it, it fell in it, it was like it, you know it was serendipity. We were in the right. Things were happening. And, and they were happening fast, and we were we were in it. You know, we were in the eye of the, the eye of the storm. Then, so, very interesting stuff. Right, you you were once described as the uh, acceptable face of British folk music. What, what do you think about that? Who, who described us as that? Um, I don't, I don't know. Know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I tell you who it won't have been. It won't have been the Ely Boat Festival. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they think that we're the acceptable face of uh, English folk music. Um, the question you just said before about the independent charts, by the way, that year, uh, the top three independent singles were The Men They Couldn't Hang Greek of France, yeah. Cocteau Twins, Purdy and Doodle Drop Drop, and The Smiths, How Soon Is Now. I'm pretty proud of that one. <laughs> so I'm quite proud of that one. Um, so the acceptable face of folk rock, well, I think we spend most of our time disproving that theory, to be honest. If you had any uh, insider knowledge, you'd soon see that. <laughs> I think the, the, fo- the folk thing with us, it's like, it, it's like, all right, we're, you know, we're, we're not a skate punk metal band, we're not a reggae band, but we're not, but we're, we're influenced by all manner of things, you know, from like, yeah, from the Kingston Trio to Public Enemy. It could, roots, you know, it, roots, yeah. it's, it's roots. It, it's 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 things that we we were, we were brought up with. It's the alternative thing, you know. Don't forget that chart music is. Oh, even though that we tied to record company, and the idea is you you to, to to get in the charts to, to make money both from you and them, but you know whatever. It's a it's a poison chalice. You know, it, it, you. you well, I mean, we, we had we had a, a fair degree of artistic freedom and, and poetic license with, with what we did. I'm very happy to be uh, called folk rock, actually. In fact, I'm not getting back in the band until you say we're folk rock. We are, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're folk rock, all right? <laughs> well, well, I don't think... In what else could what else could you really sort of describe us as in, in that pigeonhole stereotypical thing? Is you know, most of the lesson that sort of describe you guys when when we sort of email bands to and from talk about the modern bands like Levelers, Frozen yeah. Star, this other And when we talk about uh, the man that comes in, do, do you know that you guys, apart from the Whiskey Priest, are one of the most requested bands on the UK's number one folk punk show, which is. Apart from the whiskey priest. Apart from yeah, the whiskey priest. Right, yeah, the, the, the Miller brothers. Yeah, we thought yeah, I was yeah, talking yeah, big, yeah, big, up to the, big up to the Miller brothers. Yeah, I was talking to Gary not long ago. Eh? I, I love Glenn and Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that they actually put back in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about it, and they put time for it. Um, I, when I actually speak to the, the ladies and gentlemen listening to the, the UK's and One Folk Punk Show, they always say to you that you guys, they don't know what your influences could possibly be because you sound like no other band. 
Oh, that's there. good, isn't it? Well, that's well that is good. Yeah. yeah. And we, like well, we, we never set out to sound like or directly plagiarise anyone. Or, uh, or sound, you know, our sound is, yes, it is. All go. All go to the yeah. <laughs> yeah. We like roots, it, it, we like roots yeah. music. That's what yeah. we, we, we would listen in our, you know, when we were off on tour of the band. The music would be ancient. It would be anything, you know, from Kingston Trio, like Chris says, to Woody Guthrie, to the Boppy Band, yeah. to Christy Moore. Um, or, you know, music from you know from Ireland, from Scotland, uh, old English folk music, uh, rockabilly, early rockabilly, jump music. I no, what I we didn't listen to much was pop. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I remember yeah, throwing Spence throwing Christy Moore albums out the window because he was sick of hearing folk music in Ireland. You know? <laughs> yeah. I remember throwing a Damon. And then he did go on stage album. throwing Bibles and condoms out <laughs> to the crowd in uh, uh, Trinity College, Dublin. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, do you know what, one of the main questions we've had this week, uh, when the year uh, understood that we were going to interview you guys, was ask the man they couldn't hang about Egypt. What happened in Egypt? Well, what I did, it was, it was a wall. <laughs> <laughs> We were well, lucky enough. Know, uh, we were lucky enough to go to yeah, Egypt. Yeah. Hold behind. I, I, I was very lucky to come back alive. He was, he was lucky, Kush. Kush. When, when we went to Egypt, we went with the British Council, you know, as a cultural exchange, you know. And yeah. um, they said to us, they continually said to us for weeks leading up. Behave yourself. They said, they said, <laughs> do not drink the water. Oh. Don't drink the water. Or don't drink the bottled water unless the bottled cap has not been. Go, do not have any drinks with ice. Seafood. Do not drink the water. They said it's about five times. A day, and do not eat any food from any street vendors. Oh, no, don't don't eat any. So anyway, when we get to Alexandria, Kush, no, goes Port Side, Port, Port, Port Side had a. You were uh, with me. I know. Had a kid. You didn't stop me. Well, I did say. Did you say those, not those women, <laughs> those women were hissing at you, going, "Get away, get away! You shouldn't be here." Anyway, so, so you don't drink water anymore. Yeah. Kush went into the long reeds <laughs> somewhere near. Where you know, some, in somewhere the near the yeah, it in was, the desert it, it to was. die. It, in the Al- in Alamein, it was. He stayed in his hotel room for two I was days. Die like a desert rat. <laughs> and the poor, the poor chambermaids were they were being they were being rotated because it was too much for one of them to handle. They had to bring in a team. Because it was, but but apart from that, we had some great we had where some great gigs over there. Guys, we, we played Cairo Opera yeah. House. Right. Two nights. Twice, was it yeah, two nights? Two nights. Yeah. 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 Alexandria, Port yeah. Side. Yeah. It was it was fantastic. It really was, you know. So when you're travelling overseas and you're doing these, well, these excursions like Egypt, I know there's a lot of you guys in the band. How do you find common ground? Well, when that, was, that, 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 that was that was that was a separate entity. <laughs> that, that was a diff- difficult thing. We took someone with us who, had, with the idea of film, making a film, and it was going to. Well, it, we, we, the idea was it was going to be sent to Channel Four as a. <laughs> well, all right, it didn't happen, did it? But that, that, but that was the plan. And we went out, you know, not naive as we were, and on the streets of Cairo, and just to try and talk to people and get a, you know, a general consensus about what they thought about, you know, anything. And they, just, it's like, you get the fuck out of my face, you know. Yes. And uh, and we were like, okay. Some amazing experiences though. In yeah. um, up in Portside, we played on the beach. And they set up a generator and you know all the all the kids but they were the wealthy it kids was really King, but um King, it was in his old palace wasn't it? yeah King? that was in alexandria we played yeah. there but um, you did, I did. it was a hell of an experience in fact we had a reception at the british embassy had a reception for us you know and um they were so snobbish and um you know they were so dismissive of people that um, me and Kush went out and we bought uh, robes from the market and we pretended to be the servants and took the, wi- the wine around to the guests and they never even noticed it was us and it was our reception remember yeah <laughs> and they, it was so surreal we got there and the, there was a television tv company and all they could think of to ask us was what we thought about the beatles <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the Beatles? What do you I think about the Beatles? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what do you think about the Beatles? But it, was, there, it was absolutely... It was I like George. It was crazy. It was, it, it was, it was nuts. The there best. was like... The Cairo Opera, Opera House holds about 2,000 people. It's like a... It's an a, a open air... Like, Empty theatre. But there was 4,000 kids. Like there was, It was packed to the... You, you couldn't get anyone else in. And there was still like... Both nights we were there, there was another two and a half thousand like kids outside, like, like climbing up the walls, you know. And it was a lot of it was to hear like dr- like rock and roll they drums. Like drums yeah. they, they want they like bladder was our drummer of Alan, the time. Yeah. 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 
we were, we were, besie- we were besieged in our dressing room yeah. after. There were hundreds and hundreds of kids trying to get in the dressing room, banging on the door, shouting for, and they didn't want to speak to us at all. No, they, they wanted just wanted to talk to, to, talk to, to our drummer, to, uh, Andy the drummer. <laughs> the drummer, the drummer is so great, you know. And we say like kids, so you know, we're talking it. teenagers. We got rid of him. You know, like sorry, lads. Teenagers, you had just <laughs> discovered like you know, you Nirvana or, or whatever it was, you know. Uh, yeah, about that. Yeah. yeah, it was about that time. Yeah. It was in. Well, no, it was a bit later on, a bit wasn't later, it? It was, yeah. it was. But yeah, it was a real. It was. It was brilliant. Oh. Apart from getting a me big dysentery. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it wasn't brilliant. Yeah. Well, it's funny you should say um, and about going back in, the, in back in the day, back in the time. Uh, one of the questions that the uh, the guys have asked us to ask you is. Um, the minor strike, and I need you guys were sort of formed before the minor strike. Yeah, just, just. How did minor. the minor strike affect you guys, and did it affect your music? Definitely. You know, we um, we 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 got involved in the benef- the first benefits for the miners, and that was the first time that we came out of London to play as well. Up to we went up to Sheffield, mm. up to South Yorkshire to do benefits. Saw the massive police presence, saw all the coach loads of Met Police going up the motorway. I think it probably politicised the band to a great extent, Minor Strike. We were we'd only been going for six months and you know a lot of the stuff we were doing was kind of a skiffle really and um, but then you know we got involved in that experience and it changed the identity of the band I think. Fantastic. We took it on from there. Well um, I think from from I've had a bit of a reckon up before we did the interview. Thirteen albums? Oh my continue I've no idea been the last one. <laughs> Just like that. Any, uh, any plans for the, when, we get, when are we getting the uh, next album? Yeah, we, we're going well, to do on one. Now. We're going to do one in the autumn. Yeah, right. And then it'll be out early next year. That's yeah, we're just getting the stuff together. In fact, if you'd have come a little bit earlier and you poked your microphone through that window there, you'd have heard probably half the album being demoed. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> right, we've got somebody at which we'd if, if that lady, we had, that. if that lady hadn't requested uh, um, <laughs> Harvest Moon, I was going to play, uh, you know, one of yeah, yeah. one of my new compositions yeah. today. Oh, yeah, right. But I didn't know we were going to do an acoustic uh, slot yeah, at the way. Acoustic Festival of Britain. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> in fact, Ricky said, should we drop the acoustic section? <laughs> yeah, yeah, at the Acoustic Festival of Britain. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Should, yeah. So from here, where are you going? Next slide is the Witchwood Festival. Next, next, show, next show yeah, yeah. Um, well, is well, mine's we, tomorrow night in a, in a little village. Yeah, out we've got a few little gigs. Tomorrow. We're going to be demoing and starting Wickham to get ready to record. Then we've got Wickham Festival coming up after that. It's yeah. a wonderful festival. It yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got friends down there, so you may be ambushed. Yeah, <laughs> down there talking about. Well, the new we've well. all got we've got roots. roots we've got uh, yeah links to you know the, the south coast Dark all, all the way. Darkest Hampshire. Yeah, and well, from Brighton down to yeah, yeah, all the way through to. We're from, we're from all, all Don- points in North West and East and yeah. South, aren't we? Yeah. Home of football. Over. Home of football. There you are, of course. Well, it's been absolutely <laughs> fantastic <laughs> to talk you. to you. The man will hang, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, back to the this studio. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks for that.